I'm sure you guys already think you know all about these super secret rhinoceros beetles hidden within the original Resident Evil 4, but just in case you might not be a real fan, or you're just a casual gamer, or a biological girl, I'll go ahead and recap the official narrative surrounding the origins of these beetles, just to catch you up to speed. But first, please click that like button, subscribe, and share this video if you're interested in Resident Evil content like this. Also, quick shout out to my RE Tards. Thank you for supporting the channel. If anyone else would like to show their support, links to the Patreon page are in the description below. Now let's get back to the bugs. So, the official narrative goes something like this. A disgruntled motion designer known as Ishiro Nishimura was working for Capcom in the early 2000s when he was assigned to a new project under the direction of Stinji Mikami. That project being the original Resident Evil 4. And without Capcom or Mikami's knowledge, Ishiro supposedly riddled this game with these bugs, placing them within the game in secret, right before the game's release. But luckily for Ishiro, the statute of limitations on such a crime in Japan had expired before Capcom or the ESRB ever got wind of it, so there was never a formal investigation. Mikami claims he had no involvement or knowledge of these bugs for many years after the game's release, and by then, Ishiro had already moved on to infect other video game productions, and to this day, his bugs are still being discovered in other Mikami titles and pretty much anything Ishiro has been involved with since. And that's the official narrative fed to the public, a story that fans have been satisfied with for over a decade now, all except for me. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Why would someone risk it all just because they're supposedly a fan of Beatles? There just isn't a solid motive for this crime. At least not for someone like Ishiro Mishimura. You've got to remember, this was the early 2000s Japan. To be accused of such an offense would bring about great shame, especially on Ishiro's family. If convicted, he'd either have to commit seppuku or worse, go work for Sega. Fuck it. Hey. So, to me, the risk just isn't worth the reward. Another piece of information I discovered was that these bugs have been found in numerous titles that Ishiro's had nothing to do with. So I believe we have fingered the wrong man here. I also believe that either Capcom or Mikami's team have been actively trying to cover up this conspiracy from having online message boards and forums remove posts and users' accounts for simply trying to discuss the topic. They've been lying about the time frame on when these bugs were first discovered, as well as lying about their own knowledge and involvement in the creation of these bugs. Yeah, for years they've been telling us that these bugs went on unnoticed, but I did some digging myself and discovered what I believe is the earliest known mention of these beetles. I found responses on a removed forum post on a GameFAQs site where the poster claimed to have found these bugs, but strangely, the user's post and account have been deleted. So, could this be proof of a cover-up? If so, what are they trying to hide from us? And what exactly is Ishiniro Mora's part in all this? Is he simply just a patsy covering for whoever was really responsible for these bugs? Capcom, Mikami, and Ishiro aren't telling us the whole truth. So, I guess it's up to me to get to the bottom of another 20-year-old Resident Evil 4 mystery. But for everyone new to this mystery, I'll catch you up to speed with everything we've known about the Beatles thus far. These rhinoceros beetles can only be found in four locations. The first beetle can be found just chilling on a tree, right after the signpost on the trail warning people to proceed with caution. This is right before Leon meets Luis Serra for the first time. The second beetle can be found right outside Mendez's boss fight shack. The third beetle can be spotted on a tree before entering Salazar's crypts, the mines where they dug up Las Plagas. And lastly, the fourth beetle can be found perched on a lamp outside the U3 battle arena. And even though Leon's laser pointer will highlight them as interactable objects or enemies, all four of these beetles cannot be harmed, killed, eaten, or sold. Not even rockets, eggs, or knife slashes can kill them.
Once they're fired upon, they'll just fly off into the sky until they cannot be seen anymore. And that's it. That's everything we've known about these creatures' characteristics. Until today, that is. Yeah, I found some new details that the community has overlooked. Little details, like the fact that these bugs don't show up on thermals, like the other small critters in the game. But more importantly, I noticed while facing each one of these beetles, just before I attacked them, they take off with what looked like different flight animations. Beetles 1 and 3 would do a reverse 180 to nope right out of the area. Whereas Beetle 2 would take off a few degrees to the left while Beetle 4 flew directly to the right until it was off screen. Minor details, but details nonetheless. Just, what could it all mean? Is there a purpose to this? Like I said in my last video, as stupid as you think Resident Evil 4 is narratively, this game was expertly crafted and refined to be the best selling game ever made. Like it was designed in a government lab. There's more going on here than you might think. I wasn't joking when I said RE4 had Stanley Kubrick levels of detail and symbolism hidden within it. We just haven't discovered it all yet. So I took these different flight animations as a clue. Could there be a message or meaning behind these flight patterns? And that's when I discovered, thanks to Leon's compass, that these beetles weren't flying off in different directions. They were actually all flying in the same direction, 157 degrees southeast. Which is kind of an oddly specific choice, especially if you take everything I discovered in my previous video into consideration. The sun is at 180 degrees south, never straying, and same with the moon. This full moon is locked at 90 degrees to the east. It's like I said before, they just slapped everything up there at their default settings. Every shadow outside during the daytime runs from south to north, Yet, every one of these bugs flies off at a very specific angle. So, with no other leads, I focused on the southeast direction, or more importantly, the letters SE. And according to Google, the word SE is Latin, meaning apart. But apart of what? Separate? Separated from what? Each other? Separate ways? I checked. I played separate ways, the Beatles are there, but they don't do anything new. No new leads. But then it hit me. It was so obvious. There are four Beatles that we all know of that have split apart, but all traveled in the same direction. The Beatles Beatles. The Beatles the band. And what's even crazier is that Abbey Road, the section that is showing on the album cover showing all the beetles separated but traveling in the same direction actually runs 157 degrees southeast through London. Just look at the album cover and you'll begin to notice the similarities between the band and these bugs. From left to right, we have George, Paul, Ringo, and John all going in the same direction representing the same number of beetles found within the game. And if you compare these beetles to the album cover, you'll start to notice many traits in their environment, clues in their positioning that go beyond just coincidence. This was designed with purpose, almost as if this album cover serves as a roadmap for Leon's progression through Resident Evil 4. For instance, George is the only beetle wearing all blue. Paul and Ringo are dressed in all black, while John is glowing white. Now, just look at the game. George is the only beetle that can be discovered during the daytime. George's blue symbolizes that daytime, where Paul and Ringo's beetles are both found at night, which is represented by their dark suits. And then there's John Lennon's suit, glowing white like divine light, 
which is exactly what his Resident Evil 4 beetle is doing just behind the throne room. But that's not where the similarities end. Off screen, to the left of George, on the album, there is a signpost in real life. Probably not like the signpost that Leon has, warning him about the dangers of getting run over, but it's still a signpost that Leon had to pass to get to the first beetle. And just after this first beetle, Leon will meet Luis Serra, who will quickly ask him for a cigarette. Okay, I have only one very important question. You gotta smoke. And George, is this beetle behind the cigarette? Which brings us to Paul, the second beetle who is holding the cigarette and missing an article of clothing. Kind of like how Leon loses an article of clothing between these beetle encounters. Also, Paul's beetle can be found after the Mendez fight, when the shack is burning down, pouring out smoke. But more importantly, this beetle in game is the only one to take off to the left of its starting position. And everyone knows Paul McCartney was the only left-handed beetle in the gang. As well as, on the album cover, he's the only Beatle exposing his left hand. And next, there's Ringo Starr, the only Beatle in the game that can see the stars in the sky. And don't forget, all of this is on top of the caves where Las Plagas was mined, and Ringo Starr was most known for his role in Caveman. Kaka. Shit. Here's his Beatle sitting under the stars on top of a cave, which leaves us with John Lennon, the Divine Light Beetle. You can't see it because it's off frame on the album cover, but just beneath his feet, to the right, on the ground, is a sign telling pedestrians to look to the right, which is exactly where this final beetle flies off to. And just above John Lennon's head, off frame, is the street light, which would be shining light down on him, just like the Beetle in game. But again, what does any of this have to do with Resident Evil 4, Ichiho, Mikami, or this bug conspiracy? If someone intentionally did this, and this is what they really meant to represent, then what are they trying to tell us? Well, if you know anything about the Beatles, then you'll remember that. Paul McCartney actually tried quitting the band by dying in a car wreck back in 1966. But the band, as well as the label, wasn't having any of that, because they were at the height of their popularity, so they held a lookalike contest to replace him. And luckily, they found someone just as good, if not better, to replace him with. And supposedly, as the conspiracy goes, they paid off the local police to cover up the real Paul McCartney's death. Anyway, album covers like Abbey Road and Dr. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club are believed to contain visual clues about the real Paul McCartney's death, as well as reverse messages, backmasking, hidden on the tracks. I won't get too much into that yet, but just look at these album covers. On the album cover we have been examining, Abbey Road, it is believed that John is Christ, Ringo is the pallbearer, Paul is the corpse, and George is the gravedigger. No, not that gravedigger. Anyway, this is believed to represent a funeral procession. Also, Paul is the only beetle out of step with the other members, symbolizing that he is not one of them. And as for Paul being barefoot, well, that is because all corpses are buried without their shoes on. So, if the shoeless Paul on the album cover represents Resident Evil 4's Paul Mercier, Leon's voice actor, the very Leon that replaced, get this, the original Leon, who was also named Paul, Paul Haddad. Yeah, just like the Beatles conspiracy, Paul was replaced by another Paul. And the crazy thing is, this Paul Haddad, the first Leon, the original Leon, or I guess the original Paul, went on to die, leaving us with just four Leon voice actors to have played the character in the series. And you'll notice on the cover of Abbey Road, 
there are actually a total of five Beetles, if you count the parked Volkswagen Beetle. And just like the cover, Resident Evil 4 also features a fifth bug, this single insect hidden up in the rafters when Leon and Luis first wake up. A cutscene that happens between the first and second Beetles found in the game. This bug cannot be found anywhere else in the game, and it cannot be seen or interacted with once you have control of Leon. Like I said earlier, this album cover for Abbey Road is like a road map for Leon's progression through Resident Evil 4. First off, this game is kicked off with a two-car wreck. Then the new Leon passes a signpost, spots the first Beetle, loses his jacket as he's asked for a smoke, all while that bug sits in the background before spotting the second beetle, the left-handed beetle, surrounded in smoke. And after the third beetle, on the Australian cover of Abbey Road, blood can be seen on the ground, next to Ringo's right hand. And this is right where Salazar bleeds on the stone after losing his right-hand man. Next, Leon radios for backup, and in the background, we can see this police car. And on the hood of that car, it reads, Morris like Morris Code, or SOS, sent from this radio tower. And this is all just before the fourth beetle that can be found basking in the light. And strangely, the John Lennon beetle is nowhere to be found in the Resident Evil 4 remake. So I'm calling it now. I'm willing to bet that this fourth beetle will be found in separate ways with Ada Wong, since it was Yoko Ono, some Asian lady, who broke up the ban. Oh yeah, and one more thing. I even found some bullshit excuse for the license plate on the police car, which reads 5Y6724F. And I believe this tells us where Resident Evil 4 takes place in the series timeline. The number 5 represents Resident Evil 4 as being the fifth numbered entry in the series timeline, counting Resident Evil 0 up. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And why 6, 7, 2, 4, F? Well, this is telling us that it's a year 6 since all of this stuff had started. Six years have passed since that horrendous incident. Like Leon tells us, six years have passed since all this shit started, which started on 7 24, 1998. On a Friday, July 24th, Alpha Team is flying around the forest zone situated in Northwest Raccoon City, where we're searching for the helicopter of our compatriots Bravo Team, who disappeared during the middle of our mission. So, it's a fifth game, six years after the first outbreak, written right there on the license plate. As for the backmasking and the secret messages hidden on the albums, I'll have to save that for another video. I'm still doing hours of research on that topic, but just know I've wasted almost 100 hours listening to every single Resident Evil game in reverse, only to discover that Resident Evil 4 is the only game in the series with any reverse backmasking messages in its cutscenes. Here, I'll leave you guys with a little taste. Remember this scene with Luis? It's the last time Leon and Ashley will ever get to see him alive and well because just as soon as he steps foot into the next scene, Sadler kills him with his little Plaga pee, pee puncturing him right through the chest. Anyway, check out this scene for yourself. Leon! Lewis! I've got something for you guys. Uh, what? Oh shit! I must have dropped it when I was running away from them. Notice anything? No? Well, let's see it in reverse. Did you catch it that time? Luis straight up says, Nice shot. Then he pauses and clutches at his chest and then asks for help. Yeah, turns out Resident Evil 4 is littered with the subliminal clues that warn the gamer about upcoming potential threats, characters' inner feelings, motivations, and intentions, revealing lies, and giving us truths. It's bizarre, and it doesn't happen in any other Resident Evil title, not even the remake. So I've come to the conclusion that, 
Maybe Crobat was right when he called the remake soulless. Like, maybe this original Resident Evil 4 literally has someone's soul in it. Stingy Mikami, Ishiro Mushimura, or Capcom, someone sold their soul to turn Resident Evil 4 into the massive success that it is today. And maybe that's why these Beatles are showing up in other related games. It's a mark of death, reminding them of their debt. Anyway, shit's weird, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I feel like we at least got to the bottom of the rhinoceros beetle mystery and meaning. If you enjoyed this video, please like and please share this video with anyone interested in Resident Evil content. Thank you to my subscribers and RETards. Welcome to the club, John Schilling, and make sure to click that bell to get notified when my subliminal backmasking Resident Evil 4 video drops. Thanks. Bye.